thanks for making ABGN. It introduced me to a whole new world where baby steps becoming oh to becoming a developer. Well, thanks. I mean, James really is the one who makes ABGN. I, I I've helped him over the years. Um, I I more help him like find the video games and we play the games together, and occasionally he'll um, use some ideas that I'll say. You know, it's his creation, 99%. It's James's creation and his his thing, but but thank you. Yeah, he he did the Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest video, um, and at the time he made that to show to me and like like one or two other of his friends, really, because James and I used to just play like NES games in college, and then uh, that was really it. Because I mean he was making like horror movie things and stuff, and it was like a one-off thing. And that was it. It was just like one video that he made, really, um, giving his opinion on Castlevania II Simon's Quest. And that was really all it was. And then uh, sometime later, he was over at my house, and he borrowed uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde from me. He was laughing because I had a copy of it, because I had a lot of garbage NES games. I had like Rocky and Bullwinkle and just total crap games. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he borrowed it from me. And then the next time I saw him, like, a week later or something, a few days later, he, sh he showed me that video. And I'm like, oh, you're gonna, you made a video? when you, when you, I didn't know he was going to make a video when he borrowed that from me. So he showed it to me. And in that one, he was actually on camera, and he had a white shirt on. And, uh, and I was w looking at it, and I wasn't even, like, paying attention to what he was saying, really. At first, I was just like, oh my god, look at this white shirt he has on. He looks like something out <laughs> of Revenge of the Nerds or something. I'm like, then I realized as I was watching it, I was like, oh, wait a second. He put this on as, as a joke. He's playing a character here. Oh, that's actually pretty funny. And then that was that. And then, you know, that, that wasn't really the one that really... Um, I mean, I like that one, but it wasn't really the one that really made me laugh, like, really hard. Then, again, we were hanging out at some point a little bit later uh, at my house and we we were just playing Nintendo games and then we played Karate Kid and then he borrowed that from me too and then again he, then he made that video but when he showed me that video that one I thought was like absolutely hilarious that was my favorite one that he did the Karate Kid one at that point and um and he said yeah it's the Angry Nerd trilogy like that's the last one I wanted to make it really good so there you go it's the last one and I was like, oh, no, you're not going to make any more? That sucks. And, and, he, and he's like, nah, that's it. I'm done. Like, joke's old now. <laughs> I'm not going to do it anymore. And that was it. And then he didn't make one again for a while. It was like, we had a job together. And he, 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 uh, he didn't make another one for like six months or something like that. And at this job, like, not like every day, but like, you know, like once a week or something, I'd be like, oh, you're going to make another one of those Nintendo videos? And he'd be like, oh, no, I'm working on this other thing. I'm wor working on this zombie thing. I'm doing this and that. And then I'd be like, okay, that's cool, but you're going to make another one of those <laughs> Nintendo videos? <laughs> like, I really like that. Make another one. And I, ca I kept asking him and asking him. And I finally, I wore him down. And he's like, all right, like, I'll make one more. Like, what do you, like, what do you want me to make? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, like, what, what game or whatever. And he's like, all right, well, you know, come over later. We'll watch, like, a movie. And we can, you, can, you can pick one out. Um, so he had a box, he had like a shoe box full of like 12 games or something like that. And, um, so we went through the shoe box and I picked out Who Framed Roger Rabbit because that was a game that I really remembered because I, I owned it. So we, we played the game together and, you know, took notes and whatever. And that was the first time I ever really worked on a video, uh, with, with him. Um, and I, I sort of dressed up the room and I put like, there was a picture I had painted of Miyamoto. It's in the background of that video, and uh, I dressed up the room with all nerdy stuff and stuff like that. And I was like, "Oh, you know, if this guy's gonna be a nerd, he should have all kinds of nerdy stuff all around the room." So that's when I first started helping him with the video. And that's also when, right at the same time that I found out about YouTube, and then I took the videos off the website and I uploaded them to YouTube, and that was the start of our YouTube channel, James Nintendo Nerd. It's a channel that I made back in 2006 for all the videos that we do on Cinemassacre. That includes videos that, uh, that I do, that James does. James is my sort of partner in crime. 
<laughs> uh, partner in video making and uh, filmmaking. So I stick more on the uh, on the ga gaming video side because you know I'm 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 a gamer. What voices do I do? Let's see. Um, I do Mr. Bucket. Oh, Mr. Bucket. I was Mr. Bucket. Um, Cowardly Lion in Wizard of Oz 3. Um, who else? I was a bunch of characters in Wizard of Oz 3. I, I drew Ship Pickle. Ship Pickle is a character from Wizard of Oz 3, had there been a third movie. And in that, instead of, uh, because the first movie had Toto. So we were like, okay, so first is a dog, then it's a chicken. Well, what should Dorothy's companion be in this one? How about how about we make it something ridiculous like a pickle? And then we're like, well, let's that's not funny enough. How about like shit pickle? So that's where shit pickle came up from. So if you haven't seen The Wizard of Oz 3, Dorothy Goes to Hell, go check that out because it's fucking funny. It's an animation that James and I made back in 2004 the same year that uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd started. <laughs> if you type in shit pickle tattoo on YouTube, you'll see there's a guy who got a shit pickle tattoo on his leg, which is crazy. That a character that I, that I drew on a piece of like paper, somebody got tattooed. And there's like plushies of this character and like, it's crazy. Everybody remembers the, um, Part in the Angry Video Game Nerd episode where, you know, you can just walk over it. So, back when we were doing that, um, I kept falling down the hole over and over and over. And then I was like, oh yeah, I think you can jump up if you use, like, Michelangelo or something like that. For some reason, I thought Michelangelo could jump higher. I guess because Donatello, he's kind of, like, stronger with the bow. Um, Donatello can, like, jump up, you know, really... Uh, or, I'm sorry, Donatello can kill things, like, stronger than, like, if you're using, like, the nunchucks or something like that. Um, so I thought that maybe the turtles had different jumping abilities too. So I kept trying to jump up there with, with Michelangelo and I'm like, fuck, okay, it doesn't work that way. I keep falling down every time I try to jump over it cause you hit your head on the little gap. And then accidentally out of nowhere, like I walked over it and I was like, oh Jesus, you can just walk over it. And James started laughing at me. He's like, oh my God, all that time. And I wanted to make sure that, that the, the footage in the game wasn't just of the first couple stages. I wanted to like really show like later into the game. A lot of effort goes into us actually playing the fucking games too, which I think people forget. The Ninja Turtle one is really, um, that's sort of what made that series what it is, is that video. Because it established the end rant, it established, you know, a more, like, in-depth sort of review, it sort of took all the best elements, plus it was like the first one that I think the fans really had a huge reception to. That's when we knew the sh like Angry Video Game Nerd was popular, really. And I helped write that one and do the gameplay and stuff, so I also felt res kind of partially responsible. And the thing is, I love that game. Honestly, it's one of my favorite NES games. And honestly, like going back to the nerd video, another one I wrote um, was the McKids episode. Um, and this this one's more obvious. Mick Kids is mostly a good game. The only thing I don't really like about Mick Kids is the uh, at near the end of the game, there's those zippers, and so I was like, all right, well, I didn't beat the game. Like, what can I do here? So I just did like the the toasty thing, and then James took that and he read the script and whatever. So that was that episode. And, me, and when I was working on the Mick Kids one, he was working on one of the other ones. So I've talked about that before, how so, like sometimes he'll work, he, at least back then, he would work, he'd be working on one and I'd be like working on another one. Uh, one that I like totally wrote was um, Zelda Timeline. That I wrote the entire thing. Um, I told James the E.T. landfill thing because I, I used to go on Atari Age a lot, if you guys know that site. And I learned from it for, from there, and I thought it was such an interesting story. So I told that whole story to James about the landfill and the two million carts and all that. And then we, we were going to make that episode, it was, like epi it was like right after Back to the Future. I think it was going to be episode eight of ABGN. And then episode eight, I think, might have been Wally Bear or Master Chew. Those episodes I wrote, Wally Bear I wrote, and... Um, Master Chew. See, here's the thing about Ma the Master Chew episode. The Master Chew episode, 
I wanted it to be the first one where he kind of talked about a good game. Cause I was, but then I was like, well, it can't just be a good game, cause like that's not the point. So I was like, okay, let's do a bad game and a good game. So it was supposed to be like a two-part thing. So it's weird. So I, so I did Master Chew, which was the bad game, and then I did Ducktales. Then Ducktales ended up a video game vault, cause James thought at that point it shouldn't have anything good. But then later, he did the Mario 3 episode, which was like, obviously Mario 3 is a good game. Originally, when I first uh, recorded the gameplay for this and uh, did this episode though, a Master Chew was gonna be the first part, and then it was gonna be like bonus episode and like lights would come up and stuff like a game show almost, and then it would go into DuckTales for NES. Maybe one day, I wonder if I can ever find that edit. I was always curious in those blue cart games, um, you know, like, so I would always pop in the blue carts. I'd be like, what are these blue carts? They were just always interesting to me because they were a different color. So I put in these blue cartridges and they were always crappy. So I always kind of found them uh, funny. Star Trek? Yes. Um, I did the NES review and he did the rest because there was also... Whatever the other games were in that, he did that, but I, I did the NES game. And then there was like the Superman episodes. I wrote the Superman episode, but then James wrote the Superman 64 episode. So I was working on Superman while he was working on Superman 64. Another one that we like we both did was um, Frankenstein. So he did that Dr. Franken Super Nintendo or whatever that game was called. And then I did the NES game, which was um, Frankenstein the Monster Returns. So I did that part. Um, Mylon's Secret Castle I wrote, Bubsy 3D I wrote, Kid Cool I wrote, Hide Light I wrote. Zelda 2, I wrote basically that whole thing. But James did the part at the end with the power glove. Like he added that where he's on the ground with the power glove. So it's kind of like a um, collaboration. You know what I did for Power Glove? I helped him set it up, like on the TV, and I told James about, you know the black thing that goes around the, the sensor bar that goes around the TV? Because I had the Power Glove when I was a kid. I don't think he did. So I told him about the, the whole sensor bar and set it up. Double Dragon 3. Uh, James wrote that one, but I think I did a lot of the gameplay. Akari Warriors, I, I recorded some of the gameplay. I think I recorded some of the gameplay for Battletoads. Odyssey? Well, what's, wait, is it Odyssey or Pong Console? What's the one with the nerdy turd? See, the thing about that one is James and I did a video before that that was up to him and I playing the games and he, he kind of took that and replaced nerdy turd with me a little bit because a lot of the jokes we made are kind of like recycled in that episode. So like, I was involved in that way. What's your favorite quote from Amy Jan? All the ones I wrote. No, um, it's a good question. My favorite quote. It's a tight fit. It's like sticking your dick in a Cheerio, which is a line that, <laughs> um, I remember James and I were playing uh, in television stuff and he was looking for a funny line and and that was something that I said to him. <laughs> it's like sticking your dick in a chair, yeah, he thought that was funny. So Mike, how was the movie? Uh, as a wise man once said, ass! <laughs> um, so episode 10 of Angry Video Game Nerd was Top Gun. I do remember one line and one thing I was telling him and it was about this screen right here. So, um, and I owned this game growing up. If you kill everything in one hit, why the fuck would you pick less missiles if everything dies in one hit? But the thing is, when you get to, like, uh, later in it, level two or whatever, level three, I guess, there are, like, battleships and shit, and, um, I think there's even, like, a boss battleship, and that actually has, like, an energy bar, and... If you're using a bunch of weak missiles on that stuff, it makes it very hard to defeat. So the comment that I made to James going back in to 2006 when we did that video, um, 
I was wrong. So, like, also, like, what I'm trying to say is... That's as much as we knew at the time. So even though I was wrong, I feel like it was still a funny comment for somebody who had only played the game, you know, up through, like, level one. Come on. Oh, really? Now this game, I had a neighbor that had the Sega Master System. I remember he had Alex Kid in Miracle World, and he had this game, and I, that was the first time I ever played this. So, I know James had loved Rocky, so we were doing the early nerd episodes, and I was like, oh my god, did you ever play Rocky on Sega Master System? It's terrible. And he's like, oh my god, there's a Rocky game? So we got, uh, uh, or I brought over the Rocky game or something. This is back in like 2006, one of the earlier episodes. And I'm like, oh yeah, you gotta try it. And he really wanted to, because he like loved Rocky, so. So we did that one. Am I using the Eye of the Tiger? It's the Eye of the Tiger, it's the thrill of the fight. I can't even fucking hurt him. This is like, how do you even do this at all? Yeah, that's, and you know what, that's why I fucking told James about this game back then. Cause I'm like, you need to play this game cause it fucking blows. I'm in college, I showed James the Atari 5200. You know, he thought it was funny, um, you know, how it, how it didn't work and stuff. And, you know, here's the console right here, by the way. I had my 5200 modded, if I can show it. You've probably seen it before, but here it is. This is the same 5200 I had from being in college that I showed James. The trackball controller is great. Works well for the Atari 5200 trackball games. If you want to play 5200, you can play it with the trackball. Trackball is really good. It always, always has been. But trackball only works for a couple games is the problem. So it comes around 2007, 2008, whatever. We do the Atari 5200 AVGN episode. Now, I was the one who was really into the 5200 in college. I told James about the controllers, how they're crappy, and all that stuff. And so he, he moved to game trailers. We were on YouTube, and then we went to game trailers. So he wanted to do like a console video. The first thing, the first episode on game trailers was the Atari 5200. Um, I told him all about all the Atari 5200 stuff, and then he went and made the episode. I think he forgot some of the stuff I told him about it. He uh, needed to get a Y adapter cable, which I had told him about, but I guess he forgot when he was writing it or whatever. So, if you've seen the, that episode, um, whenever I when I saw the episode, I was like, oh no, you forgot about the Y adapter cable, because wh what I would have done what was gonna be, because I had the Y adapter cable. Now let's talk about the Y adapter cable. This is the Y adapter cable, okay? Which which you needed if you're gonna, you know, uh, you, if you're gonna use these, because the Wico controller has the, you know, Atari 2600 Genesis end. You plug that into the Y adapter cable and then the Y adapter cable then plugs into the Atari 5200. So you need the Y adapter cable to play with the Wico stick, right? So, um, so the ending of that episode really should have been like, then he gets the Y adapter cable, and then he tries it with the Y adapter cable, then he uses the Wico controller, and he's like, oh, this doesn't work very well, or this thing looks like a fucking butt plug or something. That's where I would have gone with it if we would have had a little more time. But anyway. All right, so we're looking at Nintendo Power. Mad for the rolling rocker. I remember when I found that. I think I found, found it on eBay. And that's Speedboard. When we did the uh, accessories thing. So this drawing right here, I made a painting of this, um, I don't know, 15 years ago or something. And uh, like this exact same thing. And then I have the painting over there. And uh, it's in the AVGN Friday the 13th episode, if you watch that, where I'm Jason Voorhees, that one. Um, you'll see it's in the background there. Some of the early AVGN episodes have the painting. I pl had this game, and I played it when I was eight years old. And as a kid, I just never really... I never really got it. never really understood this game. I didn't get into Godzilla, really, until I met James. And, uh, and then I edited all the uh, Godzilla-thon videos. 
I had to go through every Godzilla movie. I bought them all on DVD and VHS and whatever. And that was the, my real first watch through of all those movies. Um, I had seen some of them. Um, I, I remember I had seen Final Wars. And when I was a kid, I, I saw a couple of the movies. When you write a review for something, you have to really, you know, think about what you're saying and you got to capture all this footage and stuff. It's different. If you write a script, fuck. You know, if you write a script for a game, then you really know it well. So it's, it's different when you write a script. Um, like, I remember pretty much all the Monster Madness videos, because ed when you edit, like, a video... Also, yeah, like, editing, like, is a, is a thing, too. So this is one of the nerd episodes that I wrote. Yeah. And this game, I think, is one of the worst fucking... Look at that, dude. Game, in ...NES games. So you, you don't go down there. You don't. No. You want to see what happens when you go down there? Yeah, show me what, what happens when you go down there. Oh. Uh, that's fucked up! That's the and that's the joke and... Yeah, yeah. But, but you know what? The, this game teaches children hard life lessons. That's right. It's like... Dude, that's the story of life. Right, right there. there. That's what you get. Dude, you put in a fucking game these days, that they're not gonna do that when the game yeah. starts. <laughs> and that that d fucking moment defines our generation. Right. That's the fucking, and that and also defines the NES. <laughs> right. It defines both. It defines Right here. This, this is like, this is the 1980s. Here it is. This is what you get. That's your life. And by the way, if the bat doesn't kill you, the spikes will. <laughs> the spikes will. No way out. <laughs> It should just be called Fuck You. <laughs> fuck, fuck You. I think this was one of the nerd videos that I sat in the room with James and played. And I think he was playing the game and I was taking notes. I think it was one of the times when we did that. Kind of like how we filmed James on Mike Mondays, but the difference is I would sit there with a notepad and like write stuff down. And then when he'd get tired of playing, I'd play for a bit and he'd write stuff down. We'd just go back and forth. And we, you know what we do too? Um, we do it differently now, but uh, we'd write down time codes. So it'd be like, you know, seven minutes, you know, this happens. You know, 15 minutes, this happens. You know, right, if, if something like funny happened. Here you go, Mario's missing. This is, this is one of the nerd episodes that I wrote, actually. I would actually rather play Hotel Mario on the CDI than this game. This is, this is probably the worst Mario game that I, that I could think of. Oh my God. Congratulations, you have completed a great game and proved the justice of our culture. Now go and rest our heroes. Oh my god. This is the first NES game that I ever owned. It's one of the worst fucking Nintendo games ever. It's still one of the worst games. The music's terrible, everything's gray. It's fucking, the, the concept of it is absolutely stupid. And I know, I know that you guys saw the nerd review, so I'm not gonna harp on all the problems. You guys know the problems. It's the stupidest fucking game. It's the stupidest fucking game. It's terrible. Terrible, this game. Alright, let's play it again. Jaws is a game made by LJN. It sucks. It was one of the first Nintendo games that I had. I had uh, Jaws and Ghostbusters but um, I actually don't, I think that this is one of the less bad um, LJN games, personally. I also think Roger Rabbit is not that bad. Now you want to talk about a really fucking bad LJN game? Bill and Ted. That game is fucking just total garbage. I mean, none of them are like great games or anything, but I'm just talking about which one's worse, you know? Um, Bill and Ted fucking sucks. That might be the that might be the worst one. I mean, you're just jumping around like falling on your ass the whole time. The gameplay makes no fucking sense. That game is absolutely terrible. Pro uh, oh, and uh, also the other one I fucking hate is uh, Back to the Future 2 and 3. That game fucking sucks too. It's very well articulated in the videos we did about it. This is one of my least favorite NES games. And, which sucks, because, you know, I, I like Back to Future 2 and 3. The, you know, the movies, it's, they had the great property to... to work with. Daydreamin' Davey. I, uh, this is one of the AVGN episodes that I wrote. 
There was a couple jokes that I wrote in that episode that we took out because they were a little bit too inappropriate. So some of the... That would have been a funnier episode, but I recorded this one for the AVGN video as well. This one and then the uh, Empire Strikes Back one. This one I think I beat for that video. I did this for also for the uh, for the episode, the nerd episode, and um, I made it to I think it's Dagobah, but I really I tried to make it pretty far in this. I mean I don't know how far the Dagobah thing is, but that that's where I made it to. I, I definitely tried, but it was not easy. Not an easy game. Didn't you do a video on this one already? No. We never did this one. Oh, you know why you might think that? Because we did the, uh... How the nerd stole Christmas, and I did all the drawings and whatever. And I played through that one fucking game for that episode. Circus Caper? I beat that game for that fucking episode. Alright, this is the North Star. I did a review of this for the nerd video of the Christmas rhymy one. Here it is. Oh yeah, that fucking cat. Now that's a jump. That's how you fucking jump. People have said to me that they like uh, the title cards from the early nerd episodes because um, they're kind of crappy, so that kind of makes them funny. Um, but at the same time, like I know that like I can draw a lot better than that. So whenever I see those title cards, I just look at it and I think, oh god, like I, I could have done a better job. But I didn't know like so many people were gonna be watching the videos back then. And those drawings take like you know sometimes up to a week to do, and they they're only on screen for two seconds. To be fair, the nerd gave the N64 Castlevania bad rap but they aren't that bad. Well, Duke Flukem, I guess that's my fault because I, I wrote that episode. You know, being a Castlevania fan from when I was a kid, it was one of the NES games I loved. So I got had the N64, you know, and I was like, ooh, a 3D Castlevania game. That sounds really cool. So I went out, bought that game with my own money, um, and I was really excited to play it. And then, ooh, the Medusa's coming up. I was really excited to play it. I've told this story before. Um, but brought it home. I did the first level. I liked the first level a lot. It had, it had the skeletons and all that, and the uh, uh, skeletons on motorcycles, and then there's the big skeleton boss and everything. I was like, wow, this is really cool, and I liked, I liked it a lot. But as I progressed further in the game, there was a lot of bad camera angles, for one thing, and um, just problem after problem after problem in that game. If you watch that nerd video, um, I explain what the problems were, but yeah, uh, there's things I like about that game, for sure. You know what I got James for Christmas a few years ago? Um, I guess it was more than a few years ago now. I got, I got him, um, that Mike Tyson's punch out, cardboard cutout that you guys have seen. Um, it had, we haven't had it in the recent videos. I don't know where he put it. I actually should ask him what, what he did with that. But, um, we used to have, he used to have it in the nerd room. I don't know what, what he did with it. I looked for that fucking thing for years, because I, I knew it existed, and then finally I got it. So, I wanted to have that in the nerd room for nerd videos. Somebody's suggesting Rascal for AVGN. Yeah, we, uh, I played Rascal with James. We, we messed around with it. Uh, I think we were going to include that in, or we were thinking to include it in, what's it called? Either the wish list episodes or um, what was the other one? The Shitsmas. Some games, you know, it's hard because you gotta. They really have to provide the right, um, the right sort of comedy. You gotta be able to, you know, get some humor out of it. Hannah Brewbaker asks, "Will there be more AVGN videos?" You know, it's finding the right game and writing a script and whatever you know we try to really keep the quality of it up so we take a little bit longer to make them now it's like a lot of the, a lot of the heavy hitters have been done already like the power glove that was a big one to do you know it's like well that's been done now so you know but i have a huge list of um APGN episode ideas like it's not running out of games it's just wanting to keep it um creative because, you know, you could sit and make 
videos all day long about bad games. There's 20 bazillion bad games out there, but it's got to be like, there's got to be something more to it. Like, did you guys watch the um, the Seaman episode, the last one? James didn't just take the Seaman game and be like, oh, here, it's a piece of crap. Like, watch that episode. Look at how creative that episode is. That's why the episodes take a while, because, you know, you have to write them and come up with, like, a good idea. So, that that's why they take a while, because we want it to be want it to be funny and good and worth watching and everything. Yeah, do it for Nimoy. Do I have all the North American NES titles? Um, well, here's the thing. So, a large amount of the N NES games that are in the nerd collection at James's place, those I bought. So, um, a lot of them I bought, honestly. Um, and a lot of them came from my personal collection at the time because we were making the show, you know? So I wanted a lot of my cartridges just be in there so we could automatically, you know, because it's a character, you know, and it, it, we're trying to give the appearance of this crazy gamer who has all these games and stuff. So I, I put a lot of my games um, in that collection. So um, I don't think of that as really my collection or James' collection, really. That's kind of like the nerd's collection. Now, these are ones that I bought just for the AVGN videos. Here's like Fire Dogs. And I think I bought this one for the video, but it didn't make it in. No, sir, I don't like it. Can't decide what's worse, the, the soundtrack for Gummy Bear Bears or the soundtrack for um, Crazy Bus. I'm gonna say Crazy Bus is worse. I forget where I found that game. Is that, uh, I think it was at a game store or something. I showed that to James. It's like, hey James, listen to the soundtrack on this. This is Mel Gibson. You have no real problem so far. You can shoot like that, you can jump with A, it's fine. Now, how do you want to swap characters? This is how you swap characters. <laughs> and then you have Danny Glover. That's all you really need right there. We're getting too old for this shit. Don't call the president. What, but why, Willie? As part of one of the Christmas episodes, we did the, uh, here you go. This is what everybody wanted to see right here. It's a weird looking system. Now, just so you know, there is a whopping, a whopping five games for the system in total. The one we did not play in our uh, episode years ago was the Spider-Man game. One of the things I get asked probably just about as much as people requesting for me to beat difficult games is an update to my game room. So another thing I wanted to mention was was this. Um, this is interesting as well. This is something I got um, because we were doing the Berenstein Bears episode of Angry Video Game Nerd. Now this is the uh, voice module for for Atari, and it worked with uh, Smurf Save the Day and and the um, Berenstein Bears game. Berenstein. That must be from one side of the universe. Porkies, there's a nerd video on that, I guess I'll show that, which is next to Pitfall, you know, one of the classics, I guess I should also show that. That's a cool cover, and that's a fun nerd video, if you haven't seen that. Here's Sword Quest Waterworld, all the Sword Quest games. Tapeworm, here you go, this is what you guys wanted to see. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's the cartridge. Here's the Winter Games, I think that was in the nerd episode. X-Man, here's the one that was not featured in the nerd uh, Atari, you know, porn episode. Uh, this, is the, this is the other one, see, adult video game cartridge, and it has nothing to do with X-Men. You guys have pretty much seen the majority of my crap. So, I'm here with Matt. We have a little bit of history. You guys might remember the Angry Video Game Nerd episode. Uh, I think it was the Spielberg Games episode. I was going around a convention one day, I'm looking around, and I come up to a table, and I see all these Atari imports, and I come upon this table, and I see a game called E.T. Go Come, and I'm like, that's going in the episode. He's the guy right here that sold me the game. Um, so, he, you know, you, you've already, in a way, been part of our channel. <laughs> and I remember seeing it, I was like, wow, you know what? You got that from me. Exactly. All right, so when I was in college, we'd go out to the video rental store. And I think that's when I first saw the Troma's War. I really liked Terror, Terror Firmer. And then I saw Toxic Avenger, and I really like Poultrygeist. Um, and then 
I found the Toxic Crusaders that it, it was on NES, and we'd go to conventions, horror, horror movie like conventions and stuff. So we'd always see like Lloyd Kaufman around. He goes to the conventions and all that. And uh, I forget how it actu actually happened, uh, but I guess I think uh, just email or, or something. And um, so it was just really, really cool experience that, you know, uh, that he was down to do that. What I'd love to do, I don't know how he'd ever do this, but what would be the best thing to do? I would love to get the guy who's on the front cover of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, whoever that guy is, I'd like to find that dude and be and get him on our show. <laughs> That would, be, that would be amazing, uh, but who, who knows where he is? If, if anybody knows him, or if he's around or anything, like, contact me and let me know. I would absolutely, we would love to have him, that guy, be, come on and talk to us. So, I bought a PC so that we could record ABGN games, and not only the official game, but the, all the fan games. And then, um... Big Rigs. We had wanted to do that. So I bought Big Rigs. I think I got it off eBay. And I installed Big Rigs on the computer. And then I started figuring out how to record all that, those fan games and stuff. Somebody asked a favorite board game. Uh, I've said this before, I like um, Key to the Kingdom a lot. That's a really good, a really good board game. Oh shit, there was a board games episode on it. Oh, and also another one that we did that I love was um, Weapons and Warriors. That's the name of it. Weapons and Warriors is fun as hell. You try to knock the other person's like castle down and get all their get all their guys knocked down um, by like by flinging um, like cannons and uh, crossbows and stuff like that at the other guys. That game is really really fun. Basically. I got a little more involved to make the game, because I didn't des actually design the game, um, but I got a little more involved this time around because I wanted, from, from playing the last game, uh, I wanted the game to be a little bit more on brand, meaning I wanted it to be more like the show is. So yeah, I did the drawings for, for uh, the intro and all that. So I did this and then it was, it was digitized. I drew the, these original drawings on pieces of paper and then they, uh, developer took it and made it pixelized, basically. So here's my old stream from 2015. Now, do you notice something about this right here? There's no ABGN episode that has a unicorn flying around. So when I played this, I was like, "What is the? What is the unicorn?" So here's what here's what I did. That's what I had done to the unicorn in the background. I'm like, "Who who is that unicorn?" So, we actually did an episode on the Berenstein Bears, which I'm sure you actually remember. So there they are. I like games where you wall jump, so I wanted something that had like wall jumping, but at the same time as you're wall jumping, let's have something related to the angry video game nerd happening. So, you'll see what you'll see what's ha happening here. It's pretty it's pretty funny. I had to get that in there somewhere. Because the first two games had had no reference to, to that, so I was like, we need that shit in there. Of course, this is Super Mecha Death Christ. That's a character James and I made when we were in college in uh, The Wizard of Oz 3, Dorothy Goes to Hell, which is just a stupid parody thing we made. I've talked about it a million times, Shit Pickles from that too. And then uh, later, those characters ended up in AVGN. Here's the thing with the Rolling Rock. Let's let's talk about the Rolling Rock for a minute. Uh, so the nerd character definitely drinks Rolling Rock. When James and I were in college, occasionally we'd get a Rolling Rock. Um, it's like you know, it's like cheaper beer, um, from what I remember. At least I haven't had it in a very long time. Um, it's fine. Uh, I know that like. I'll drink it, and James will drink it, but it's it's neither one of our favorite beers. Um, so if you ever happen to see James, uh, see, he, I, he can't say this because he's such a nice guy, but I'll say it for him. <laughs> if you're ever at a convention and you're gonna buy James a beer, get him something else. Because he actually, and he, but also he doesn't like IPAs. And other ones like help with the idea, like I told James about Hong Kong 97.
Do I have a place where I upload my art? Well, lately, as far as art goes, I guess I've been doing um, drawings for you know what's bullshit. And occasionally I'll do drawings for videos. If you guys saw the Hong Kong 97 AVGN episode, I did a, some drawings in that one. There was a drawing of like Andromeda and stuff like that, but um, I don't draw quite as much as I used to. Uh, because now I usually spend most of my time editing uh, videos, James and Mike Monday videos. Because that's a show that comes out, you know, every week. We even do like bonus videos and things like that, so. Hey there, Mike. Just saw the Mike and James Monday's Blu-ray is available. What made you guys choose the episodes that you did for the release? Um, I just picked episodes that I thought were um, some of our better episodes. I, I know that um, I liked to pick the ones that were more... Um, that I thought we gave some good, really good information on. Like, I know one that's on there is um, Castlevania, Rondo of Blood, and I felt like we, you know, really uh, explained that game uh, and gave a lot of good information on it because a lot of people hadn't played that game and um, I put a lot of thought into which which ones um, would, would go on there. I have the Amiga CD32. Been wanting to do some kind of video about that. Um, now, this came out in, uh, mostly it was popular in Europe, but it also came out in uh, Canada. This is the NTSC version of the console, and I have uh, I have a you know I have some games for that which I've tried. There's a game called uh, Gloom, which is kind of a ripoff of Doom and some different things. So I definitely want to do a video about that. So here's what I got in terms of uh, Amiga CD games. Um, not too many. This I think was kind of the you know the bonk of the system or the Mario of the system. Actually, you can play. Commodore CD TV games on the Amiga as well, and this is the town with no name. I had the Commodore growing up, and I love the Commodore, and I'm going to hook that up and do streams of it, and well, or at least a video of it or something at some point. Um, the one thing I remember doing that was really funny with the Commodore 64 is it had a printer, and for like Christmas time, uh, we'd like print out a banner that said like, you know, uh, Merry Christmas, and with a Christmas tree on it, but like you'd start doing it, and it would be like, eh, 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 yeah. and like 15 minutes not even like 25 minutes later it would print out the banner and i remember i i specifically remember going and eating dinner and coming back and the thing was still going and i i had a game it was called lazy jones yeah lazy jones was basically a game where you're going around like this office building and you go into yeah. you go into a room and there's basically mini games right. you go into the room and i remember one of the games was like there's a turkey and there's a fork and you got to get the fork into the turkey or whatever stupid games like that but they were almost like little mini atari yeah. games but you got a it was, it was like an action 52 of a type right. of game. But the games were actually kind of fun, a lot of them. One of the funny things about the game, though, and it was so early on that you never saw anything like this in the game, because it was in an office building, he goes into the bathroom and he actually pees in the toilet, and there's, you don't see anything, but it, it goes, it makes a funny, like, peeing sound, and then he, he, like, exits. There's funny, quirky games like that. There's, like, a Psycho game, there's a Friday 13th, there's a Freddy Krueger game. I'm like, yeah. oh, I can play all that stuff. I'll be able to play, like, the Thundercats game. Right. And the He-Man game of, of course you know apparently you can put um there's a usb port there's on a this. usb port yeah, and you can do that but apparently you can only do one at a time i don't prefer to use them because i'm also i'm a collector like i like to um i like to own the boxes as, as well like it's just for me it's part of the experience so this is going to be about other systems that you probably have no idea that i have that i haven't talked about before and i hope you find it interesting all right, briefly, I want to talk about the Bally Astrocade, Bally Midway, I guess. Um, this was a early video game console. This is the Fujitsu FM Towns Marty console, which you probably never heard of because it was only released in Japan. I'd like to do an ABGN episode on, on every console providing there is material like I don't know if there's anything for the FM towns to do but I will say this this console is working not like my second Amiga which was completely broken so we will not be destroying it if we ever do an episode about it yeah and again that the only reason that was destroyed is because it was beyond it was beyond repair I actually had contacted a few people about repairing it um, and it's it's fucked so well it's definitely fucked now but it was fucked Okay, so the Amiga CD32. So here's the deal with that. Um, so we just came out with the episode on, on that. It was the longest 
it was such a long process for that video to come out. So I want to tell you guys how that whole process happened. I wanted there to be a nerd episode on this particular game. So I went searching for it. And I found the game on eBay. And then I I looked at the game and it was for the Commodore um, CD TV, which I had never heard of. And I'm, I was like, what the hell is the Commodore CD TV? So I did some research and I looked that up and it was like this weird, obscure system, the Commodore CD TV. And I was like, okay, well this game is for the Commodore CD TV. Let me find one of those. And I was having trouble finding one and whatever. But then what I read was Oh, this game, Commodore CD TV games work on the Amiga CD32. So I ended up buying an Amiga CD32, and it was a little bit pricey. Then, so I tried the game, put in, I put in Zool or whatever, and it doesn't work. And I'm like, fuck. It didn't work because the system was PAL. And so I was like, fuck. So then I did more research. And I find out that there was an, there was a much more lower produced version of the CD32, the Amiga CD32, that actually was NTSC, and I think it came out in Canada. I want to say. So time goes by. I eventually find the NTSC version of the Amiga CD32. Now I get that. Now we're talking like a period of like a year has gone by, and so. I, oh, I get the thing working, the NTSC version working, and I show the games to James, and I say, you know, let's do it. I bought it because I was like, let's do a James and Mike Monday on it. Because we had done, like, Rondo of Blood and stuff like that, and I, I wanted to do, like, other systems, so it's not just all NES and Super Nintendo. I'm trying to, like, branch it out to do more stuff, because I found that fucking Kang Fu game. I saw this really... Um, Fun. I just see a kangaroo, like a shitty kangaroo on a game. I'm just like, by the way, that game was expensive. And um, so I bought it, hoping that it would be funny. And it was, I'm so happy I got it though, because it was so funny. That's basically the story uh, of of that. But it was an AVGN episode that took a, a three years or something to finally have come out. Um, do you still help write the nerd episodes? Says Kenny Lauderdale. Um, I haven't actually written one since Bubsy, the Bubsy 3D one, um, but but help, yeah, um, definitely. Um, I actually I did a whole thing recently um, that I talked about the Amiga episode. Um, I didn't write that, but I helped you know find all the stuff and fig figure it all out. Basically, what do you call that? Conceptualize. I guess you could call it. I think what I have is I have the Donald Duck game and the Snoopy game. I, I always get those confused. But yeah, no, actually, I wrote that one too. Um, actually, you know what? That came out more. The thing is, that's technically not like a nerd episode. That was like a, a Pat thing. But yeah, I, I did write that too. So I don't know. So I guess you could say that that was the last one I wrote. One of the nephews will fuck, will literally give the middle finger. Which is why I wanted it to be like in a nerd thing, because it, you know, AVGN, flipping the bird, it's like, it's a natural thing, so I like had to fucking put that in a video. Will, will he come out and do that? Watch, watch this, right here. That. It's like he's giving the middle finger. So how it went was, I was like, oh my god, there's a Donald Duck game on Famicom, I gotta play that. So I buy the game. I pop it in, I'm playing the fucking game just because I like Donald Duck stuff. I see that and I'm like, that's gonna be an ABGN thing. So then we then we did it and it ended up being a Pat thing. So that, that's the history of that. So, Power Ranger fans, here we have a uh, Sentai Jetman game that I bought many years back for uh, ABGN episode. You guys might remember that, the AVGN Power Rangers episode. I got these games because I was researching for that episode on what games we should include. And a lot of the games 
for Power Rangers. The ones that were more known were like the Super Nintendo ones and some of the later stuff, but I thought, you know, were there any 8-bit Power Rangers games? So I did uh, the research back then, and they were for uh, Famicom. So I searched them, and these were a little pricey. Honestly, I think I got these when I first started streaming on YouTube. Um, but I've never streamed them because I wanted us to do the AVGN episode first. I guess I should just tell the whole story. So, you know, James didn't really watch um, Power Rangers growing up too much. I had actually done a video uh, years and years ago on, on the site, um, Top 10 Worst Mighty Morphin Monsters, I believe was the name of the video. And I just took a bunch of the most ridiculous Power Rangers monsters, like that pig fucking one with the Marvin the Martian thing on his head, and like the Frankenstein monster, and all the, all those ridiculous Power Rangers monsters. Because uh, that was the part of the show that I really liked. And then I remember talking to James in college and throughout the years, about off and on, once in a while, about Power Rangers. And he said, you know, he wasn't into it. He didn't, he wasn't, it wasn't his thing. And then eventually I was like, you know what, James? I don't really understand because you like Godzilla and you like, um, you know, uh, all that kind of, all that kind of genre of stuff, all this, all the Japanese, um, stuff like that, um, Inframan, all that kind of stuff. James loves that stuff. So I was like, how, like, you really don't like Power Rangers? And, he, and he's like, you know, I just really haven't watched enough of it. And I'm like, well, I have all the DVDs, or at least I had the DVDs of the first few seasons, the ones that I watched on TV. So I gave him the DVDs, and he had the DVDs for like a long time, because I had given James a lot of DVDs and stuff. Um, but he got around to finally watching the DVDs. We talked about doing a Power Rangers nerd episode, because we thought a lot of people would like that, because Power Rangers is popular and everything. I'm so glad I spent like, God knows, probably a hundred dollars on this fucking thing for that video. That looks like a middle finger. Did we mention that in the AV Gen video? I don't know. Was that mentioned? Because if not, we should have. Oh. No, it wasn't. It that was not said. See, I should have helped him write that one. Treasure Master. I suggested this one though because. Uh, of the story of it because it felt a little like the sword quest thing how there's like an issue it's like basically you have what you have e the E.T. story with the landfill which is interesting and then you have the whole sword quest thing which is interesting and then treasure master is another type of thing like that where it has like an interesting story to go along with it so I thought that that would be you know an interesting thing I found the game the ga this game was expensive it's the greatest game ever. Meanwhile, made. Tony actually likes it. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> Tony's like, yeah, this game's pretty good. It's pretty good. I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> All you gotta do is hit down when you jump. It's like, come on. <laughs> is, there, is there anybody that you can think of that in real life acts a little bit more like the angry video game nerd? Is there anyone you can think of? Uh, El Elmo? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, Mike Matei acts a lot like the oh, angry video game nerd. Oh. <laughs> That Micro Machines thing, that was gonna be like episode six of AVGN. Really? He's been wanting to do that since 2006. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was the, one of the oldest ideas. Just the, just the Micro Machines part. Yeah. Micro Machines. <laughs> just the Micro Machines section of that yeah. video. Uh, yeah, liter literally, that was gonna be like like episode seven That's or eight funny. or something. Yeah, and we never got around to it yeah. for some reason. Hey Mike, why don't I see you on rental reviews anymore? Um, I've answered this question before, but I'm not in, nor was I planned to be in all of them. I appear in them sometimes. I try to, um, I did the first few episodes or whatever, but, um, I'm really only going to do the, um, I'm trying to at least do the ones that I would have more to say. So, I was in the Star Trek V one, because, like, I have things to say about Star Trek V. So, when they do movies that I have more to say about, and I'll, I will participate. So, that's all. They're all big fans of, um, like, Robert Rodriguez and all that stuff. And I, I like that too, but, um, like, I don't, like, I couldn't 
talk much about it. Fuck. Where they can talk a lot about that. So, but James wanted me to be in that video because he wanted to tell the story of, um, what's it called? Showing me that movie in college. But then the rest of the video, I had like, fuck, I had like nothing to say. So I was just like sitting there. So, people were like, is Mike pissed off? <laughs> it's like, I didn't know, I didn't want to open my mouth because I had nothing to say about the movie. So I just let them talk, really. I love your appearance on the Plan 9 rental review. Hey, actually, uh, speaking of, the, of that, um, I appreciate that, because I, you know, one of the first videos James and I did, as far as the movie reviews go, was um, Ed Woodathon. I don't know if any of you guys remember that, but we did that a long, long time ago, right when, I believe right when we started the uh, Spike videos. We did Turtle Tuesdays, because Ninja Turtles was always a big thing with James and I. We grew up with it. It was, like, nostalgic. So then we started doing some cartoon reviews because we mostly do like Monster Madness and horror movies and stuff like that. So we started doing a little bit like TV shows. And I watched every episode of Inspector Gadget. There's like around 80 of them. And I took notes for it and all that. So wrote that and then edited that. Mike, you do not like to act anymore. I never liked to act, act really. Um, in the beginning, when we started doing the show, um, it was just a necessity. Like James needed. So, actually, the first character, the first character on ABGN was the uh, 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 not Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, and um, that was supposed to be somebody else, but they could they couldn't make it or they bailed or something. So I ended up doing it, um, and I didn't. Like, I don't, I don't like to act, and I don't really, I, especially at that point, I didn't like really want to be on camera, but like James needed the help, so I was like, I'll do it. Did I get paid for my acting? <laughs> no, not really. Well, we didn't even make money on YouTube uh, for the first six years of it or something, you know? Which is crazy to me now, because now YouTubers are like, hey, I've been, mo I've been on YouTube for, you know, a month or two. And I'm not monetized yet. It's like we weren't monetized for like over half a decade. Mike, are you Pepsi Man? Uh, no, I'm not. Um, I still I still work on ABGen a little bit here and there. Um, I picked the game. Uh, I found I found it. I I bought the game, and we wanted to do uh, we wanted to do Pepsi Man. A lot of food things like are they're just like funny, you know. Um, and I bought the uh, modded PlayStation for that. James really likes to do the skits and all that stuff. I'm more definitely more about the gameplay and like the, and the analogies. That's the part of the show I think's good and funny, you know. I kind of am not doing as much for the show as quite as much anymore. But I, a lot of times I am still picking the like, overall game. Um, and like, I, and I do still like, I get the game and I get the console and I get it working and stuff like the Amiga and all that. And then I hand it off. I'm like, oh, this would make, or like, um, like, you know, good examples. Like I do these streams and then like just yesterday we were playing Bart's Nightmare. I will probably suggest that, you know, as a thing for, to James to do, like for later, which will probably be in like two years from now. Hang on, look at the finger. You stick that finger up your ass. <laughs> Like, is that, maybe that motherfucker's Liam Neeson. Fuck. Well, the opening screen was nice. I just, I'm gonna try to play that one more time. He's crying. <laughs> this maybe is AVGN material. That reminds me of Silver Surfer on the ground. Like, I can't even get by this fucking guy. I beat the cyber demon in fucking Doom with my fists, and I can't get by this fucking guy. <laughs> and this is why the angry video game nerd exists. Okay, that's interesting. Let me write this down before I fucking forget. ABG and Dark Man. 
<laughs> I find these shitty games and I'm like, hey James, this one's good. Basically in the game you go through rings, as you would know. Oh, there it is, there it is, come on. Okay. Superman wins. This looks like a job for Superman. Oh, look at this. I'm not, I'm not flying through rings. Who knew? Oh, what's this? Boxes. Oh, I would have to show this part to James. Superman 64 and boxes. Laughing out loud, it's even worse than the rings. It is. Yes! Yes! Then there's no time to waste. Oh my god! Oh my god! There are so many problems with this game. Superman glitches through the wall. You, you glitch. Like, the girl leaves. You're in the middle of the fight. The room isn't big enough to have a fight like that in. They don't give you enough energy. There's not enough health. There's not enough of the, um, the ice stuff. By the way, apparently somebody said that there's like a life code that you can do, but I haven't used any of that kind of stuff. I've done this all like totally legit. Yes! Holy shit. Superman wins, I'm hitting the start button. Dun, 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 This game sucks! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Legend of Kagi. Okay, Kagi. Kagi. However it's pronounced. Oh my god. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at me climb the tree. And, and we're going to the left, which is also weird, and we're dead. And, not, and, oh my god, what the hell is that? I'm two, I'm two. I'm two kagis. Kakis. Hey, I got, I got ball, I got, can I get that ball? I can't, I can't grab my ball. Why can't I grab my ball? Come on, Kagi, grab the fucking ball. Oh, 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 I did something. What the hell is this? Is your N64 RGB modded? It's uh, HDMI modded, which is why James wanted to borrow it. He doesn't have it. Anyway, mo most of his shit is not modded, but most of my stuff is modded. Um, James doesn't do streams. Like I've said before, if he ever wanted to get into that, I'd be more than happy to set him up with, help him learn how to do all this, but he's, you know. Being far away from your mic makes your stream sound like the old nerd episodes when James was using the shitty mic. I like it. Makes it feel more comfy. Ha! Um, actually, you know what's funny? Um, I, I use the same exact... We, we use the same exact microphone for everything. All of my videos um, and James's videos and everything, we use the same microphone for everything. I, I'm using the same microphone right now that... Um, is used for the ABGN videos, um, and it's the same microphone we used for James and Mike Mondays. Um, everything's actually totally consistent. Um, but yeah, uh, I am probably sitting further away from the microphone to where James would sit for the nerd. See, he usually has the microphone like right above his head for the nerd episodes. And if we're shooting James and Mike Mondays at his house, um, he has the mic, it's the same place, because we do it in the nerd room, so it's usually right about there, where the microphone here is, mm, three to four feet in front of me, so yeah, it's probably a different sound, but, um, it's like the way my setup is, I mean, I could probably hang it from there, but I don't really want to. When we're doing these streams, if I find something that I think James will really think is funny, like, you guys remember when I streamed that Indiana Jones game? I was like, okay, this is perfect for James. But, um, sometimes I have to find things that are, um, a bit shorter. You know, we gotta pick games that are probably take under two hours. Something like that. Well, James is a, is a busy beaver. 
We usually only get uh, one or two days a month to shoot. What if a major event happens or something crazy, would you change James and Mike Monday? What do you, what do you mean a major event? Like an earthquake? I, I must have a list of them. 200 games. <laughs> I'll fucking do. But you know, we fi we finally did have end, um, what's it called? Oh my god! Uh, Monster Madness, kind of, but we kind of still do it. The only, actually, honestly, the only thing I can imagine doing is slowing down or something with James and Mike one day. Eventually. Because we've been doing it for, what, four or five years or something, so. And he's got kids. I could see it slowing down, maybe, eventually. But I don't think we'll ever stop. Do something. 540? Alright. 